Hey, you can't bite the camera. <laughs> Camera. Do you want to introduce yourself? Fine, I'll go first. My name is Marissa. Hello, welcome to my channel. This here is little Miss Freya. She is my eight month old Australian Shepherd and she's freaking huge now. She used to be my tiny little lap dog and she still sits in my lap, but she's just not the tiny part anymore. <laughs> but if you guys are new to my channel, hello and welcome. I've been doing monthly videos on Freya since I brought her home at eight weeks old. Basically kind of like a pup date thing. So I show you guys like what she's learning, how big she's growing, our schedules, like how we're you know living with her. And you guys have absolutely loved them. They've turned into so much more than I ever thought they would. I just wanted to make the pup dates for myself so I could look back at like how tiny she was at eight weeks old and everything. But they've just become such a fun thing for Freya and I to do, but also a good resource for you guys because I always do Q and A's in them. So you guys can ask me questions on how Freya and I do things. And so many of them have been training related, which I try to like touch on of course in those monthly pup date videos. But I finally decided because, hey, you can't bite the camera. <laughs> But I finally decided that it's probably time for me to just make videos on all of the things you guys keep asking me about because I wanna be as helpful as possible and I try to you know, dive into them, but some of these topics need a whole video and an explanation, not just a 30 second you know, Q and A portion of a pup date video. So we are kicking off this new series that I'm starting here, basically of how we trained Freya. I'm planning on having a new episode of this little series every single week. So make sure you're subscribed down below if you're not yet already so you don't miss out on future you know, training videos. But I of course wanna start out this video and literally every other video in the series by saying that I am not a dog trainer. I am not a licensed dog trainer. I'm not a certified dog trainer, but I did train my dog. And I used a whole bunch of resources to do that. A lot of YouTube videos, a lot of YouTube channels in general. We bought a puppy course, a training course that helped us do this at home. So my plan for all of these videos is just to show you how we trained Freya and to help give you guys the resources that we used to do that. So there's probably a hundred different ways to do every single thing that I'm gonna make a video on, but I'm just kind of here to show you how we did it and what worked for us. And I thought we should kick off this series with crate training because I'm trying to think, you know, what's the first thing that I kind of did when I got her at eight weeks. And this was probably the biggest thing that we focused on a lot when she was really, really young so that we would have good success when she's older. And I think we've accomplished that. Like she's been crate trained really, really well since the first week that we got her. It took a couple days, but literally since then it's been great. And she loves her crate and she goes in without an issue. And you guys have definitely asked me to help teach you guys how we did that. So I wanted to kick off this series with that. But if you have a special request or something that you're dying for me to show you comment it down below I will add it to the list and every week we'll see what we get into I literally have a treat here for Freya because I'm gonna use it for this video for training purposes and she knows I have a treat here for her so she's literally sitting in her bed sorry my tripod is in the way she's just sitting in her bed waiting for her treat like a good girl she's like I know that I only get it if I'm sitting here or in my crate so she's just sitting in this bed staring at me <laughs> which is why she hasn't really been in this intro <laughs> so I kind of planned out how I wanted this video to go so that way my thoughts were more concise because I I've been doing YouTube for many, many years, but I've never done training related videos. So I wanted to make sure that I try to like hit everything I want to and be as helpful as possible. We're gonna break down this video into a three parts. And the first one is gonna be my top three rules that we followed when crate training Freya. And then I'm gonna show you our setup that we have for her as far as with her crate that we have currently, but also I wanna like show pictures or videos what it looks like when she was eight weeks old, because that's really where the bulk of the crate training was happening. And then we're gonna finish off with my 10 tips or tricks or really the bulk of how we crate trained her. Like what did we do to actually crate train her? We're gonna go over 10 different things that we did and things that we still do to help make her love her crate. Rule number one to me is the most important rule out of the three and it is to never use the crate as punishment. If you're wanting your dog to love a place or a thing or a person, they have to have positive associations with it, positive experiences with it. And as soon as they start having negative experiences with it, you're not gonna like it anymore. And that's the same for people. If you really, really like a certain food, but it's really a 50-50 hit or miss on if whenever you eat it at that restaurant, you're gonna have like food poisoning afterwards, you're gonna start not wanting to go there and not wanting to eat that food anymore because you don't know if it's gonna be a good experience or a bad experience this time. The same thing with a dog in a crate. So we never used it as a punishment. She never went there when she was being bad or got in trouble. It was only a fun and good place for her. And I will say when she was like a puppy and we were trying to teach her all the things and puppy nipping and all of that, it was hard not to use it as a punishment because 
you wouldn't know what to do with her. You know, like she's biting you and you just want to get her away from you and throw her in the crate kind of thing. Do not do that. Puppy nipping is for a different video, but something that we did instead was just removed ourselves from the equation instead of removing her from us. My second rule for crate training would be to get a big enough crate for them for when they're an adult. One, even just for money purposes, you don't have to keep buying crates because they're really expensive. But two, just get a crate with a divider in it. We have a wire crate. We had a divider in it when she was really, really little. She of course doesn't use the divider anymore because she is big and fills out her crate. But when she's super tiny, this crate was huge because we have a 42 inch crate and she was a tiny little Aussie puppy. So of course it's going to be big. If you get a divider, however, that will divide the space into something small enough for them. And I put this in the rule side because it's really important for crate training because I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably thinking about the fact that they're going to pee or poop in their crate and the number one thing being like whining in their crate, which we'll get to. When it comes to accidents, you don't want to give your dog too much space in the crate. They should have enough space to stand up all the way, to turn around, and to lay down. That's basically it. With a tiny little puppy in a 42 inch crate, they have all the room in the world to sleep on this half of the crate and then poop on this side of the crate. And they're going to do that. A funny little tidbit that I heard when I was watching YouTube videos was that you want to give them a master bedroom, but not a master bath. They should not have a bed bath combo here. They just have a bedroom. And so the divider helps you do that. So you can actually divide the crate into their bedroom and that's it because they don't get a master bath. Inherently, dogs don't want to go to the bathroom where they sleep or where they lay their head or where they eat. They just don't really want to do that. They will if they absolutely need to, but you should be taking them out regularly so that they don't feel the need they have to go to the bathroom in the crate. But that is the thought process behind dividing the crate up is that they will have enough space to sleep, which means they won't want to go to the bathroom where they have to sleep. And as Freya just grew up, we just moved the divider along the crate to make it bigger and bigger as she got bigger until she was big enough where she didn't need it, but also to where we knew that she wasn't going to have accidents in the crate, where we trusted her enough to not have accidents in the crate. We didn't really have to worry about having that master bedroom bath kind of thing, but it's really, really important when they're so small and learning where to go to the bathroom. Like if potty training is not a thing yet, dividers will save your life. And my third rule would seem very obvious, but I want to make sure that I just lay it out there. And that is to go slowly, like go at your dog's pace. If you brought home an eight week old puppy, they're probably not going to care about the crate because they don't have any negative experiences with it. So all you can do is create positive ones and it goes a lot smoother and a lot faster to crate train your dog whenever they're just like a puppy and I've never seen a crate before. But still go slowly and still go at their pace. Like crate training is not going to happen in one day. It's not going to happen in two days. It's going to take multiple times throughout the day of you working towards this for multiple days or weeks. Some dogs do it quicker. Some dogs do it longer, especially if you adopted a dog from a shelter or anything like that. They probably already have a negative experience with a crate of sorts because they've been put away in this shelter behind the crate gate in this little kennel. Like they're already not going to like being put away and secluded from you or other people. So you have to go really slow and give extra love and patience to those dogs. But in general, to all dogs, just go slow. It's not going to happen in one day or overnight. Before I dive into the actual like tips and tricks and everything, let's just show you our setup here that we have currently and then also show you like videos and pictures of what it looks like before when she was like, you know, eight weeks old and everything. So this is our current setup. We have this white playpen. I will link it down below. We got it off of Amazon that we used to kind of give her a bigger space with her bed and her water dishes and everything in here. Of course, when she was a puppy puppy, water was not in the playpen or crate area simply because we didn't want her having accidents, but now she can have water and everything like that. We don't worry about it. But this white pen, of course, does close. You going in? <laughs> and coming out. Okay. <laughs> this little piece will come out and connect the two pieces together. I'm not going to do it right now. But this one's fun because it has a door. So when she was a puppy puppy, we would never open this section. We would just open the door for her to go in and out of. Super handy. But of course, we can't fit through that. So we just kind of leave it open now. And this is her crate. We have a 42 inch crate that we kind of connected to the playpen using some carabiner clips. That way it's just all contained and she can't really, you know, push the crate out of the way and get out. Everything's connected. And when she was a puppy, nothing was inside of the crate. Right now we have a little blinky in here. Oh, you're bringing me your toy. Hi. <laughs> oh, I can't. Oh, girl. <laughs> okay. You can sit here. She loves to chew and play with her toys in my lap. I can't say no. Mommy's a little busy. <laughs> <laughs> but as a puppy, nothing was in the crate, only this orange chew toy because it cannot be chewed up. What are you doing? You can't sit in my lap anymore. You're trying, I see you. But right now we have a Kong bed at the bottom of the crate. It's like built for crates and is, you know, the perfect size. And then we have a blankie in there for her that's covered in dog hair. I'm so sorry, it's disgusting. This is waterproof and also washable. So it would be helpful if we had any accidents <laughs> or if anything happened in here. <laughs> you can your blankie. <laughs> Where are you taking it? Okay, I'm sorry, I'm in your bed. Here, I'll move. I'll move so you can... 
laying in your bed. <laughs> He was so cute. But I gotta say one of the best things that I got was this crate cover, which we also got off Amazon, because if you close the crate, which I'm just gonna close the top one here, this piece we just leave open whenever she's not in there, we'll close it up, and that way it's completely covered on all four sides, and she's, you know, like dark and enclosed. Dogs are den animals, so they really, really like to be enclosed and in the dark kind of thing, and it also helps with whining and just making them feel a little bit more comfortable in the crate. <laughs> when she was a puppy, we didn't have this crate cover. We literally just took blank that we had in the closet and draped over the crate because I think the first night we didn't and she was whining so much and so the next night we used blankets helped so much so you don't have to buy a crate cover if this wasn't too expensive but literally blankets will do towels will do whatever but I do suggest covering the crate it helps a ton this one's just really cool because it zips up on all the edges we don't zip up the front edges when she's in there at night but it can be and then there's actually like a little window here that we usually have open this just looks a lot more sleek for us than all of the blankets and stuff we were using before, which is why we got it because we had like purple blankets pink blankets whatever and I just wanted it to look better which is why we got the crate cover but blankets will do if you're not really worried about aesthetics now we basically had the same setup at our old apartment but just smaller because we had less space now we're able to use like every panel of her playpen and give her like a huge space outside of her crate but back then we only had like four or five so it was smaller but she was also smaller so it was fine and I just love our setup honestly we will probably keep it are you bringing me a toy <laughs> We will probably keep it like this for like a year or when she's like a year and a half or something. That's just my thought. I don't really know when we'll ever phase this stuff out. Eventually I don't want, you know, all of this playpen stuff, but I feel like she'll always have a crate because she'll always have, you know, a safe space or if we ever need a safe space for her, we'll never get rid of the crate. But I will say that I think half of the reason she did so well with like crate training and stuff is because we used the playpen and the crate together. It just kind of gives her a lot more space, makes her feel a little bit more comfortable than being confined to just a crate but there were times that I put her into the playpen with the crate door open and everything and she would still choose to go sleep in the crate but it just gave her a little bit more room so when she got antsy or like woke up from a nap as a puppy and wanted to do something she could at least walk around a little bit come back out lay on her bed take a nap there go back in her crate it just kind of gave her new places and other things to do than just be stuck in a crate they do sleep a lot but they get bored easily and if they get bored they're gonna start doing things that you don't want them to do like chewing on the crate trying to escape chewing on the playpen chewing on their bed pooping and peeing everywhere whatever so we tried to give her things to do like having chew toys available to her so that hopefully she would choose them <laughs> Let's get into the bulk of the video. So my 10 tips, the 10 things that we did to actually crate train Freya and things that we still do to this day. These are in no specific order. I just kind of like brain dumped them. So we're just gonna start at the top of the list. One of the easiest things that you can do to help your dog love their crate is to associate it with things that they already love or things that they want and can only get if they're in or near the crate. Number one being, food. Feed all the meals in the crate, especially when they're a puppy, because they're going to be eating multiple times throughout the day. When Freya was little, we fed her at least three times a day, if not more. All of those meals were fed inside of the crate. We would push her dish all the way to the back, so she had to go into the crate to go and eat. We left the door open. There's no need to close it that soon, but just teaching her that going inside of the crate and all the way to the back, you get good stuff. You get food back there. My second tip is to train around the crate as well. For this tip, but probably the rest of them as well, I'm going to be using the word treat or like food and stuff like that because Freya specifically is very food motivated. But if your dog is more like praise motivated or toy motivated or whatever is motivating for them or things that they love more, interchange those for you and your dog. I'm just gonna be using treats because that's Freya's holy grail. But for our training sessions, we used her kibble, which was her normal dog food. So anytime that I decided that we were gonna have a training session, that we were gonna work on our basic commands as a puppy, like Sid and teaching her how to do all of that, I would do it inside her playpen. You guys have already seen our setup now and also what it looked like at eight weeks. But Basically, I would just sit in her bed and she would sit in front of me in front of the crate. So it would be me, her, the crate, and we would train. I would teach her how to sit. I would teach her how to shake. I would teach her how to lay down, teach her all of the tricks that she knows now she's learned inside her playpen. And that's just creating positive associations again in and around the crate with the playpen as well, because whenever she was doing good things, she would get treats and it was never a place of punishment. Every time we were in that space, it was getting food, which she freaking loves. So she learns to love that space over time. Aside from training, my third 
tip would be to play in and around the crate. And again, you can interchange this with toys or treats or whatever. But for Freya, we would literally just throw treats into the crate and she'd run in and go get them and come back out. And we'd throw them back in the crate. She'd run and go get them and come back out. That's kind of what we did. We just made it a game. And she would only get the treats or the toys or the praise, whatever, when she was inside the crate. And she'd come back out. But then once she went back in, she'd go get that treat that I just threw in there. And eventually they'll start to realize that and either stay in the crate, which is perfect. Like that's what you want, which is kind of my fourth tip. Eventually you'll get there to where they'll just sit there because they know they're only going to get treats in the crate and you just keep feeding them. Keep jackpotting those treats, maybe like five or six of them, depending on what you're using for treats and praise the heck out of that. Like make a big deal, make it so fun that they're in that crate and then stop and they'll probably come out and then they'll go back in and you do the same thing. You give them a treat and if they stay, you jackpot it. And then some dogs, they're not going to come out. They're just going to keep sitting in there, which is literally perfect. And once you've reached that point, that brings us to my fifth tip, which is to start practicing like closing the doors. The doors haven't even moved up until this point. You should be feeding the meals in there, training around there, playing games around there. And then you can practice like just closing the door, not latching it, but just showing that it moves. If they don't freak out and they just sit there fine, give them a treat. If they try to come out, you let them. Again, we're going at their own pace and then wait for them to go back in and you basically start the process over again. They will start to pick up that I get treats whenever I'm in the crate. I get treats whenever the door's closed in the crate. And if I leave the crate, I don't get treats. So I'm going to go back in the crate and you're just reinforcing this cycle for them. And once they don't freak out and once they don't leave, whenever you're closing the door, then you can latch it and feed them treats through there and just kind of hang out in front of the crate with the door closed. And then you'll slowly work up that time frame of that door being closed with them. Starting out, you're going to be like three seconds and then maybe it's 30 seconds. Then you go back down to three seconds and then you wait for a minute and then you go to two minutes back down to three seconds. Like it's just alternating. You don't want it to be on a schedule because then they'll start to realize like I only have to sit in here for five seconds. If it's longer than five seconds, I'm going to freak out. So you want to change it up for them, keep them guessing. And then the longer they sit in there, the more treats they get. I think the number one mistake that I see with crate training or that I've like heard other, you know, trainers say is a big mistake as well, is that people think that they can like feed a meal in there, which is great. And then just throw them in there all night and the dog's going to be fine because they're not. We worked a lot on crate training the first day we brought Freya home. And even the first night she cried all night. Good night, my love. First night in a crate. She's not gonna like it very much. This is so new, this is so scary for them. And so just kind of have patience for that. I know it's hard and it's so sad to listen to them cry and you can do what you would like. We decided to take that tough love approach and when she cried, we let her cry it out. We did not go to, you know, get her. Our plan is to, you know, see if she'll quiet down on her own. She probably won't, but we'll give her some time. Oh gosh, it makes my heart sad. But like, I don't want to give her attention when she's whining. The first night we did go out there and kind of sat with her, but we didn't take her out of the crate. We would just sit in the playpen with her in the crate closed. We didn't talk to her. We didn't give her any attention. We just sat there with her. Like our presence was there, but we kind of found ish a method that works. I mean, it's very short term, but essentially like I just kind of sit like this outside of her crate with her and I don't really, you know, give her much attention. I'm just kind of like there, like my presence and she'll finally lay down. And then I wait for like a minute after she's like laid down, not moving. And I just slowly get up and I sneak off into the bedroom. We didn't say, oh my goodness, I know I'm so sorry. It's so sad in there. Like, it's okay. Like, no, we just went out there and we sat down. I didn't even look at her. It was just, I sat on my phone and I just sat with her until she fell back asleep. And then I'd get up and go to bed. But I say that because one of the ways that is really helpful for crate training, especially for longer periods, is to not only do it when you're going to bed for long periods or when you're gone. They shouldn't only know the crate as when they're going to be separated from you for eight hours because again that's going to start creating the association with the crate that you're leaving for a long time and they might start catching on to that and then might not start liking that so what we did is we practiced a lot throughout the day i would put her down for naps at eight weeks in the crate or in her playpen we'd kind of alternate through that on her schedule and the first like week or so during her nap times i would still sit out with her so i was in the living room watching tv or on my laptop or cooking or working or whatever it is making normal amounts of noise talking listening to music whatever but she was in her crate. The floof is in her pen right here. She's actually laying in her bed, chewing on her Nyla bone. It's great. She's hanging out in there. The doors are shut and everything like that, but I'm still hanging out next to her because we're still trying to get like crate training and like pin training under control in a way, if that makes sense. Yesterday was a little hectic because after our...
And so she started to learn, you know, good things are happening in my crate. I get treats, I get food. And when I'm locked up and the door is shut and I don't really like this, but mom's still nearby. Like mom is still here. I can see her. I can see her walking around. I can hear her, whatever. And then she'll take a nap. And we still do that. So whenever we're eating meals, she gets locked up in her crate or her playpen. And we're still here watching TV, but she gets crate time other than when we leave her for long periods. My seventh tip I think has been the best tip for us because again, Freya is very food motivated that we actually started doing this in the car as well because she didn't like car rides at first and we implemented this in the car and that is to have a specialty treat or maybe a toy whatever works for your dog for the crate that they only get when they're in the crate for us that is a peanut butter kong freya does not get peanut butter kongs unless she is locked away in the crate and that has done wonders for us because she loves peanut butter and so she gets so excited to get the kong that she does not care that we're leaving she has no like anxiety that separation anxiety when we start to put her shoes on she's not like oh no, mom and dad are leaving. She's like, oh, <laughs> mom and dad are leaving. She runs to her crate. She goes and sits in her crate now waiting for her Kong. And when I grab it out of the freezer because we freeze our Kongs, they last a little bit longer. She knows she goes right to her crate. If I'm even filling a Kong, she goes to her crate. I have built that association, that peanut butter Kong's crate. So she knows if I want a peanut butter Kong, I gotta be in my crate. And she loves that. She doesn't care that we're leaving. She doesn't care if she's locked up. All she cares about is her Kong. And they'll start to build a positive association with the crate because they absolutely love that thing that they only get when they're in there. My eighth tip is what to do basically when they are not being good in the crate. So when they are whining or when they're freaking out in the crate and they don't like it, like what do you do? So for us, we decided to just ignore it. And that's with everything. That's not even just with crate training. When I'm teaching her a new trick or she's not doing exactly what I'm asking her to do, but she is barking at me or like going crazy or whatever she's doing, I completely ignore her. I will literally just like look up away from her and wait for her to calm down and do what I'm asking her to do. And then I praise her and I give her the treat. We did the same thing with the crate so if she was in there and she started whining, we don't even look at her. We don't give her attention. We don't talk to her. She just whines in the crate and that's at night. But even during the day while she was learning to be crate trained, she would, she would go in there for the first like 10 minutes, kind of whine at me, even though I'm still walking around the living room because she wanted to be with me. And as soon as you give into that, even the one time they will learn that their whining gets them what they want. And we personally just didn't want to deal with that. Tough love approach can be really, really hard. And it's so sad to do. Like I absolutely hated it. It broke my heart every time, but it is quick to teach them not to whine in their crate kind of thing because it doesn't get them anywhere. One trick that I heard of that you can do for whining dogs in their crates is to kind of tap the crate on the top because it'll make a noise and it's a novel noise. It's a new noise to them. That'll make them be like, oh, what was that? And once they stop crying, you would reward that. If they are crying, ignore it. And as soon as they calm down, yes. And you can practice that sitting right here in front of the crate. Like if they are not having it and you're practicing and you just close the door and they're freaking out, wait until they are calm to let them out. Because again, as soon as you give in to that whine, they're gonna learn that, oh, if I don't like this, if I whine, mom will open the door. And that's not the case. So we wanna teach them calm behavior. And so we only reinforce calm behavior. But that brings me to my ninth tip, which is do not unintentionally enforce bad behaviors because enforcing isn't only giving a treat for something. Again, if your dog is whining and you give into that and you're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And you pet them and you hug them and you just like cuddle them up because they're whining in their crate and you immediately take them out. That's reinforcing that behavior. Even though you're not giving them a treat or you're not giving them that toy, you're reinforcing that whining means getting love. So they're gonna whine because they want love and the cycle is just going to continue. So while you're training with the crate, especially if you're playing like the games, like we said about like throwing a treat in and they come out, don't hype up them coming out and also don't praise them or give them treats for coming out. You only wanna praise them or give them treats for going in. So there isn't like a go to your crate, you throw a treat in, they go in, they come out and you're like, yes, good girl, good girl when they come out because then you're reinforcing the coming outside, not really the going in as much as you are the out. So just being cognizant of like what you're doing and how you're praising when you're praising your dog or giving them treats because you could be unintentionally reinforcing a behavior that you didn't mean to and that you don't want. My 10th tip is definitely for like that puppy stage because like I said, for us, we took Freya out every like two hours when she was a puppy puppy, even in the middle of the night because we did not want accidents in the crate. And to this day, knock on wood, she has still never had an accident in her crate. And I know for me, whenever she did start whining in the crate at first, I'd get so worried because I'm like, well, what if she does have to go potty? Like, what if she's gonna like poop in the crate? Like we should go get her. But again, if you go and get her while she's whining and you hype it up and you make it a big deal and you go to take her out and you praise her and you give her the treats for going potty, all of the things that you're supposed to do, you're going to reinforce the behavior of whining in the middle of the night, gets me out of my crate, gets me love from mom, gets me to go outside, gets me to get more treats and also more love from mom. And then I go back in the crate and she's gonna 
keep doing that cycle to get all of those responses. What we did is if she was whining in the middle of the night and we thought it was because of a potty, we would go get her, but we would literally not talk to her, no emotion, no fun, no praising, no nothing. We would just get her out, take her potty. Once she went potty, we would pick her up and we would put her back in the crate and close it up and go to bed. That is it. And we did that because I had the fear of her having accidents in the crate and I would rather her just go potty, but I also wasn't trying to reinforce her whining to get out of the crate. So we didn't make it a fun time for her, something that she didn't want to do, something that she didn't want to look forward to, and that way we would curb that behavior. So that is something that you can do, especially if you have a puppy, but just don't make it fun. Do not make it a thing that your dog will look forward to or want to do every single night. But those are the 10 things and 10 tips that we did to crate train Freya, and I think that they all worked so well. We still do basically all of them, and even though she caught on really, really quickly, all dogs are different, so please go at your dog's pace. If you have other tips or tricks that have worked for you and your dog, like comment them down below, help each other out down there, because there's definitely so many things that you can do for crate training. These are just the 10 things that we did that helped us a ton. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and the first video in our little dog training series here. Oh, she loves to stand on us and I don't know why. Curly, oh, gosh. <laughs> Hello, what are you doing? Thank you. Say goodbye, thank you for watching. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> I love you guys so much more than you ever know and I will see you in the next video. Bye.